My name is Sarah Blanton and I serve as the Development Director for Safe Harbor of NC. We are a local 501c3 nonprofit organization and our mission statement is to provide a Christ-centered community for women to rebuild, renew, and recover. Safe Harbor was established in 2004, so this is our 20th year of service. We're very excited about that. And so Safe Harbor is really a story of someone stepping out on faith. Uh, this ministry was built on prayer and on faith. And so Safe Harbor's founder, Debbie Haynes, she was very involved in jail ministry with her church. She worked as a church secretary for a number of years. And as she was involved with this jail ministry with her church, she really had an opportunity to build relationships with the women that were incarcerated. And she did her homework. She learned the reasons that women were incarcerated and a high percentage of the women that were incarcerated. Uh, it was due to substance use, of course, but there were also uh, these layers of trauma abuse, untreated mental health. And so um, it really just inspired her to one, take a deeper look um, at what trauma is and also um, learn about the local resources that, are, that were available for women. And uh, to her surprise, there were not any resources available for women that were incarcerated, but were working to transition back um, into the community. So Safe Harbor contributes to the community um, by being that a safe harbor for women, for all women. Um, we have immediate and long-term programming for women and children that are experiencing homelessness, for women um, that are seeking recovery and supports um, for substance use disorder. Um, we also have some transitional apartments for women in recovery in addition to a transitional cottage for women that have experienced chronic homelessness. We have classes that we offer to women at large in the community and our hope is that everyone that we encounter, especially the women that we serve, that they will have a thriving and purposeful life in Christ um, because we are a Christ-centered organization and what we believe is that he is the healer of all of our diseases, and He's the only one um, that can bring the kind of healing that's needed in the lives of these ladies that we love so dearly. So Debbie Haynes, our founder, you know, I think she knew that what she wanted to do was have a situation where the organization was not dependent on grant funding, but also would be able to provide services and programming at no cost to the participants. So. Um, that's a lot of relationships, that's building a lot of momentum, that's a lot of conversations, and that took a lot of work. And so, you know, we appreciate Debbie's desire um, to work, to have a situation where we could be truly person-centered um, with the kind of care that we provide, that we can involve the community, that we could involve the faith community as well as businesses or, or other organizations and town foundations. And so over the years, yes, it has been a lot of legwork and a lot of going to the mailbox, just hoping and praying that the money would be there. But, you know, God has provided um, and He has worked miracles. Um, there's no other word to use to describe what has happened at Safe Harbor in the past 20 years other than the word miraculous. We have um, experienced a God working um, through amazing individuals in this community. I can't speak enough on the generosity of this wonderful community that we have um, and how you know, passionate and compassionate that people are um, in wanting to come alongside of women. Um, that are struggling and, and that are in recovery and want to better their lives. And so um, what started out as challenges on just generating that support has been, has become our saving grace because the amount of support that this community has poured into this organization is overwhelming and it just continually blows my mind and touches my heart and it touches the lives of the women that we serve.
Safe Harbor started out um, with a day program to provide a safe place for any women and children that were experiencing homelessness during the day to come. Um, and you know, that provided a lot of opportunity for individuals in the community to get involved, to lead Bible study, teach life, st life skill classes, um, help these ladies get to job interviews. And so, you know, the, the longer that you work and come alongside of women on their journey to recovery, you learn the hardships that they experience. You learn about the barriers. Um, you learn about the ongoing needs in your community. And so year by year, what I love about Safe Harbor is that they continually um, look to determine what the needs are in their community and they level up. I mean, they've leveled up every year in terms of programming. So what started out as a day uh, center or a day shelter for women and children evolved into a larger center with adding long-term residential recovery programming for women um, and added to that transitional apartments and a social enterprise for women to gain um, employability skills. And then the addition of our transitional cottage, The Passage, so excited about that because that gave us an opportunity to um, experience transitional and wraparound services for women that have experienced chronic homelessness. I feel what sets Safe Harbor apart is that we are Christ-centered. And so um, everything that we do um, is based on that foundation um, of Christ um, and biblical principles. And um, but also what sets us apart um, as an organization, I think, is the time, the time that we invest in the ladies, you know, um, our services and because of the very generous support that we receive in the community, you know, it allows us to have that long-term residential holistic programming. You know, I think there is some um, misconceptions oftentimes about a faith-based organization. Um, and, you know, again, Debbie Haynes, our founder, she really, truly did her homework and she laid a foundation and she researched, you know, trauma-informed care you know, evidence-based practices like cognitive behavioral therapy, dialectical behavioral therapy, motivational interviewing. And, you know, you're able to implement those effective practices, but also weaving the love of Christ, you know, your identity in Christ um, throughout all of your curriculum and throughout every aspect of the programming. And that's what makes it transformational um, instead of just a transactional approach. Being the hands and feet of Christ and holding their hand and really um, carefully and lovingly guiding them through this process. And I'm so appreciative um, of this community for making it possible for us to be able to have that intentionality in everything that we do um, at no cost to the participants. That's huge. What I cherish most is this is God's business and you know, he's got a big business. <laughs> and um, what I love is that um, I get to witness miracles happen before my eyes. You know, um, I think it's important to know that if you're going to be involved or be a part of um, this kind of work, um, you got to understand that you're going to be in the trenches with people and that it's messy, it's hard, it's complex. Be able to do that with women and just see the transformation just unfold as they begin to surrender their life to God and, and how He just shows up for them. And there, have, there have been things that when it comes to acquiring housing, employment, relationships restored that I'm a pretty optimistic person that even I've said, yeah, um, I don't know that that's going to work out, but he just proves that he is able and that he's more than able to do it. And so my faith grows every day by being a part of this organization. And it's all about building relationships and it's about modeling that love with no expectations attached. And um, you know that's what he that's what he's called us to do. That's what God has called us to do. 
um, is to love people well, um, to meet them where they are, and not get in His way. I think sometimes our best intentions can get in His way um, when we need to just be completely dependent on Him and, and love. You know, love well, serve well, um, do things with excellence, um, be in prayer constantly. You will never find an organization that prays more than Safe Harbor. Um, we do, but you know, that's where the miracles take place. And so um, I just, I feel like I am a part of something so special um, and so genuine and authentic. And that means so much to me. And I know that that has meant the world uh, to the women and children that we've been able to serve over the years. So our goals for the future are to serve more women, to serve as many women and children that we can um, through these comprehensive services. And, you know, as I mentioned before, um, you know, needs, um, the needs of women and their families, they're very complex. And so, you know, you constantly need to be innovative um, with what you're doing to truly meet the needs, the ever-changing needs in your community. Big part of what we do and how we help women in that impact and the reason that it's so effective long-term is that we really help the ladies build their community of support beyond Safe Harbor. So that's where your local businesses, your organizations, your churches, your individuals, this is where they all come in. And our uh, thrift store, resource warehouse, um, we, we desire to have more thrift stores. If we have more thrift stores, that is helping with the sustainability of the organization, but it's also providing more um, opportunities for ladies to work, to build skills, you know, to improve their resume. We need vehicles. Transportation is the number one barrier for women or for anyone really in early recovery. And so we have a Hope on Wheels program. And um, although, you know, the cost of living, can you imagine the challenges that a single mom in early recovery has when she doesn't have reliable transportation? And so we need vehicles. We need financial support. Um, facilities, volunteers, faithful volunteers that will come and um, build relationships with the ladies and serve meals and uh, fulfill all of these specialty roles. And uh, again, it's all about providing that community, that strong, thriving recovery community of support. Um, and that really ministers to the women. And your life, my life, um, is changed. Um, in that process as well.